Today, I'm gonna show you how to pick stocks the lazy way. Hey, what's going on everybody? First of all, I just wanna say thank you for 60,000 plus subscribers. It really means a lot to me and I really appreciate all of your support. So this video is gonna be a really simple way that you can identify which stocks that you might wanna look at to eventually invest in. This is not a, a detailed research video, but rather a simple method that you can utilize to narrow your choices down to pick some great stocks. I know many of you out there listening to this right now don't really consider yourself to be a stock picker per se. You're, you might not feel comfortable analyzing investments or which stocks to pick, but I assure you after you listen to this short video, I think you're gonna have a lot more confidence if you wanna actually hunt down some good companies to invest in and you're gonna see that this is easier than you might actually think. I assure you I have used these methods before. I've been doing this method for years now and with it I've been able to pick some really lucrative investments. So I'm calling this the lazy way to invest because we're gonna be looking at how you and I can leverage the information of others. Those who have more information of, than us, those who've already done a lot of the research, take a lot of that work off our plate and in a sense copy them to a degree but in a way where we can customize our portfolio to our liking so we can choose and select which companies really matter to us which companies are going to help us further our progress towards our actual investment goals and this works for if you wanna invest in growth stocks, if you wanna invest for dividends and income, it doesn't matter, it's gonna cover that. You can take this approach and pretty much apply it with anywhere within your investment strategy. All right, let's get started with this. Just by the way, this is not foolproof. Nothing is foolproof in this world, except death and taxes, right? But it's, seriously, like this has worked for me many times before, and I'll share with you at the end of this video some of the investments I've chosen by using this method. So when I said a moment ago that we're gonna leverage the information of others, when I say others, what I really mean is we're gonna leverage the, the time and research performed by Vanguard, by Fidelity, by Invesco, and by some of these larger investment firms, investment platforms. The mutual fund world, the ETF world is very, very competitive. So it's in each of these companies' best interest to build the best ETFs possible with the best mix of investments. The better their ETFs are, the better their mutual funds are, if they have the right mix of investments and the right investment allocation, the better these different funds are gonna perform for their investors. And what that means is investors are gonna likely gonna invest even more. So they're gonna get more people's money under management if they have structured their investment products correctly. The big secret I learned a long time ago when it came to figuring out which stocks I should be looking at is first, I finally figured out that I actually had to know what I was trying to accomplish first. And I think this is where you should start, honestly, is figure out what are you trying to achieve with your investments? Are you trying to get growth? Or is income important to you? Like, do you want dividends? Do you want interest like from bonds or, you know, dividends from bonds? Like, what are you, what are you after? Are, do, are you looking for like a certain kind of investment? Do you want, do you want like technology stocks? Do you want communication stocks like Facebook or, you know, healthcare stocks? Like, what are you really after? So once you figure that part out first, to think about that first, then go hunting. I found that if you go out with, into the world of the stock market and start looking at all these random companies without a plan, it's gonna be so overwhelming. You're not gonna to wanna to deal with it. And there's just too many stocks to look at and you'll have had no way to narrow that down. So by just by figuring out what you want to accomplish is already gonna help you start narrowing down your investment choices before you even begin. And step number two, all you're really gonna do is a simple Google search. And you can take this approach for almost any major and brokerage firm that I can think of. But if you wanna look at ETFs, and we, want, we wanna look at ETFs and mutual funds because we wanna eventually look at the holdings, the individual stock holdings of these companies. So you could start off your search by simply doing something like typing Vanguard ETF list or Fidelity ETF list. It works for mutual funds too. You would just type in Vanguard mutual fund list. So I think you guys get the idea. So you're just, by searching that simple phrase, you're, it's gonna lead you to all of their mutual funds. It's gonna lead you to all their ETFs right away. And remember each one of those investment products 
we can see for free what stocks they own. Now, moving on to step number three, we're just really gonna start to narrow down which mutual funds we're gonna look at or which ETFs we're gonna look at. And the way we do that is to have that goal in mind. What were we trying to accomplish? If we were hoping to find some really good technology stocks, guess what we're gonna look at? We're gonna look at technology ETFs, or we're gonna look at technology-focused mutual funds. And that's pretty much all there is to it. If you were looking for income, you would look at dividend focused um, ETFs or dividend focused mutual funds. Or you would look, if you're looking for growth, you would look at growth ETFs or growth mutual funds. It's very simple. I know this is, seems overly dumbed down, but it's meant to be guys, but it's simple and effective. And just to give you guys an example, Vanguard alone, if you look at their complete list of mutual funds and you look at their complete list of ETFs, there's over 200 of them. Yes, over 200. So just by taking this strategy, we've already narrowed it down to four different ETFs we can look at, or less than 10 for sure, just by having a goal in mind. That's how simplified this becomes once you kind of have an idea of what you want to look for from the get-go. In step number four, what I like to do personally is to, let's, let's say for example, I wanted to look at growth investments or growth stocks. Ultimately, that's where I'm trying to get to, right? So then I'm gonna open up multiple windows in my browser and I use Google Chrome, but I'll probably open up Vanguard's growth mutual funds and I'll probably open up Vanguard's growth focus ETFs. And there's just a few of them. And so once I have those windows up, then on each of those investments, I'm gonna go to the portfolio holdings. At this point, I'm looking at the portfolio holdings and there might be hundreds of different individual stocks. Some of these investments are own like a thousand plus stocks, but I don't really care about those thousand stocks or even the hundred stocks. The only stocks I really wanna know about are in that top 10 list. So typically the primary driving performance of a ETF or mutual fund, it can be easily found in the top 10 holdings of that particular fund. So I wanna look at the top 10 holdings of the mutual fund. I wanna look at the top 10 holdings of that ETF. Both are in the growth sector in this example. And I'm just gonna write down which stocks they own. Sometimes the ETF and mutual funds own different stocks, but more likely than not, I think you're gonna see some crossover in which investments they own. Oh, and by the way, at this point, let me just clarify that I'm just looking at one company's mutual funds or ETF. So if I'm in Vanguard, I'm just looking at what Vanguard has to offer. In the next step, step five, I'm going to look at the similar growth investments, mutual funds and ETFs, but in Fidelity or in, in Invesco or another major investment provider. So in this step, you're really doing what you just did in step four, but in step five, you're comparing now the, in the top 10 holdings of the mutual funds and ETFs in this example, remember, we're just looking for growth type of investments. So we're just comparing the Fidelity Growth Fund versus the Vanguard Growth Fund. And we're just looking at what holdings they own, what individual stocks they own. And because what it's gonna do is it's gonna provide us even more confidence when we decide which stocks we should even begin to look at before investing. And so by identifying and narrowing it down to these top 10 and these different major investment firms, it gets a lot simpler to pick good stocks. So what we're doing now is we're really looking at the ETF of growth ETF of Vanguard versus the growth ETF of Fidelity. And then we're really looking at their portfolio composition is what are their top 10 holdings? And what I'm looking for is crossover. And so you look for the similar stocks and that's what I mean by crossover. Of these different ETFs, even, even though they're by different investment firms like Vanguard and Fidelity, do they own in their top 10 holdings are some of the stocks they own the exact same? Chances are if both Fidelity and Vanguard think these are good growth stocks and they're both in their top 10 holdings, chances are they probably are. Who am I to argue with Vanguard? They have access to like a bajillion times more information than I do, right? I'm just a normal guy. I don't look at investments all day, but I bet these people do. I bet they pay people to look at this. And so the chances are, I, f I see that, oh look, Vanguard's growth fund owns shares of Apple. 
oh look, Fidelity also owns Apple stock. What are the chances that Apple as an individual stock holding is gonna do pretty well? Now you might be tempted to stop there, but I encourage you to take it one step further. And don't just compare ETFs, but also compare the mutual funds, the growth mutual funds specifically between these two competitors, between Vanguard and Fidelity, or Vanguard versus Invesco, or Vanguard versus PowerShares, whatever you're looking at, totally fine. But to see if there's any difference in those top 10 holdings when you look over at the mutual fund options. And then at that point, I think you're gonna be fairly confident of which growth stocks, if you if your focus is on growth, which growth stocks you should really be consider looking at or which ones you should even be thinking about researching in the first place. And a lot of my lucrative stock picks have came from this very, very simple approach. Stocks I've ended up picking just because of utilizing this approach or method would be stocks like Procter and Gamble, where I'm up over 60%, plus I get an annual dividend. You know, Apple, at first, I know it seems weird that I wouldn't think to invest in Apple, but once I saw how many different investment firms held shares of Apple, it just was a no brainer. And so it really encouraged me to jump in on Apple, and I'm glad I did. So my I have 125% gain on Apple, my Apple position right now. Another one would be now Amazon. I just knew to invest in Amazon. It was common sense. Everybody was using it. So I didn't even have to look at this or take this approach. But another one that I might not have thought of investing in as strongly would be Clorox. Um, another one would be like Pepsi. So some of these companies I would think about, but maybe not fully want to invest in them. But then once I saw that Vanguard and Fidelity and a lot of these different mutual fund companies or ETF companies were investing in these kind of stocks, I realized like, oh, you know, I can ride the coattails of the big fish, but I, I can customize a portfolio the way I want it. And so in a sense, you're actually selecting some of the best investments out of each sector. If you, Cause you can look at this by sector or you can say, well, I want to pick the best, best growth stocks or I want to find what are the, what are the best stocks for income for dividends and things like that. You can use this approach time and time again and get familiar with what companies that these investment firms are looking at. Because if they're looking at, at these investments, chances are, if you invest in one of these stocks individually, you might do okay, just a guess. At this point, I would encourage you not to directly copy these investments, but like I said at the beginning of this video, this is not a very detailed stock research video by any means, it's not that. But if you want to know what kind of things I look at before I actually pull the trigger on an investment, then check out my quick investment analysis video. I filmed this probably like a year or two ago, but it's a very quick way of the type of things I look at before actually selecting an investment. But using this approach though, you're going to be able to narrow the playing field so that you're looking at less and less stocks, but still accomplishing your overall goal. And cutting down your research time, which is why I call it the lazy approach to investing. And always, always, always do your own research. Don't directly copy what these investment firms are doing, but just keep in mind and learn why these investment firms are investing that way and see how those individual stocks are doing. Not just, don't just look at the ETF or mutual fund. Yeah, you can certainly invest in that if you want to, if you, especially if you do want to own all those same stocks, then by, by all means, choose the mutual fund or choose the ETF. But if you want to customize your portfolio with certain investments, but you want to pick the, some of the best investments out there, or at least what the smart money thinks is to be the better investments, then I think this method can work for you. The other things that are important before you actually pull the trigger on an investment is think about what percentage of your portfolio should be allocated to that one stock. You know, what type of diversification do you have? What um, industries are you lacking? What are you invested in real estate? Are you invested in communications, technology? So look at your portfolio as a whole. I pr if you're gonna invest in individual stocks, I probably would not put more than five or 10% of my total assets to, in, to any one single investment. In my portfolio, I like to keep my total positions in any one individual company down to one to 5% of my total portfolio. That way, there's no one investment that's gonna drag my portfolio down as a whole if it does lose money or if it goes down in value. In school, leveraging information of others is considered copying or cheating, right? But in the real world, it's absolutely to your benefit to leverage the knowledge and information of others. 
people who are more experienced than you, people who have more resources than you, probably have some inclination of what they're doing or what they're talking about. And I think the same can be said here for the most part in terms of the investment selections that are held within these ETFs, with, within these mutual funds. It's simply a guide and it's there for you. You don't have to use it. You don't have to invest in these companies, but you can certainly use it to see what the big players are investing in. And right away, it will cue you in or clue you in to what stocks you might want to look at further and to start customizing that portfolio that you always wanted, that portfolio that you want to have for growth or that portfolio you want to have for your dividend income. The, the options are endless, guys, and and you can do it all And by taking this lazy approach is just being lazy is actually kind of being smart and leveraging your time by leveraging the information of others. Thank you so much again, guys, for taking your time out of your day to listen to this video or to watch this video. It does mean a lot. If you enjoyed it, please do me a favor and you can support the channel simply by dropping a like. Leave a comment below. Let me know what has helped you narrow down your stock choices. Like how do you go about selecting stocks? I would love to hear from you guys and what you've learned over the years and share that with the community. I think it, I think a lot of people could potentially benefit from hearing your experience. And lastly, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We produce weekly videos that cover finances, investing and taxes. Until then, live life uncaged and I'll see you all in the next episode, guys. Love y'all. Peace.